Cool. But first, who's hot and who's not? I have three hots, three knots, and I could have done more because there are so many guys who are off to a hot start. Yeah. A couple of guys are off to a poor start. Um, but why don't you kick us off with one of your hots, and then we'll go back and forth. Sure. So I have um, two hots from the same team which I'm realizing now, but I don't even care because they've been very, very hot. Well, for two guys that I, well, one guy that I liked, I liked Michael Garcia coming into the season. I think I talked about him a few times, um, third baseman for the Kansas city Royals. He might even still be out in some waivers, um, but he is currently one of the top three third basemen, um, depending on your league. Um, just absolutely killing it so far. I mean, he's hitting 280, 296 uh, on base, but his slug right now is 800. Like, slug of 800 he's got three home runs one steal he's hitting lead off for um you know an improving royals team and he just the thing that i think sets him apart from a lot of other third basemen is he's got the speed which you know we start to see a little bit more from some third basemen now but that he's got such a fantasy friendly profile and for a guy who is going so late in drafts and is still probably available like the power speed combo is just almost unmatched compared to like he's got more speed than Cabrian Hayes. I think he's got more power than Cabrian Hayes. That was a, a YouTube question that I got earlier today of, do I prefer Hayes or Garcia? I prefer Garcia because there's just more fantasy upside there. And for a guy who's probably in a corner infield spot, maybe he's your starting third baseman, but um, you know, in that territory, uh, yeah, you, you can't get much better than that. I'm excited for Michael Garcia. And I think by this time next year, he will be in that, you know, top 15, you know, the startable range for third baseman. Yeah, the Royals have been hot up and coming, like you said. My first one, who's been hot as well, Christian Yelich, and maybe not the full resurgence. This was a guy who I said when we were doing our best ball draft, I was like, I don't know, I'm not feeling it with this guy. He's six for 15 so far. It's a 400 average. He's on base 471. His slugging, by the way, is 800 as well, as he has two home runs, Four runs scored, three RBIs, and two stolen bases early in this season. Christian Yelich is off to a hot start for the Milwaukee Brewers, and he is my first hot. And the only question is, and this was one of the mailbag questions, might as well hit it now. Can he keep this up? Is he officially back? Is this the Yelich we can expect, the MVP Yelich for so many years, or is this just a hot stretch? Yeah, he's not He's not going to be MVP, but I, I certainly think we can expect pretty good consistent production across the board i mean you know he's not going to bring back mvp numbers but certainly top 100 maybe even top 50 numbers yeah that's why i think i questioned it when when we were in our draft you said you didn't like yelich i was like why not like he's put together a couple solid seasons since he's you know he's kind of put the injuries past him a little bit um definitely a guy that for a while people thought was injury prone right but he's put those behind him and yeah he looks good and that whole brewers team looks good so far yeah, who's your second hot? My second hot, same team. Um, I'm going to go behind the dish slash first base. And full disclosure, this is a guy I was not in on to start the year. Um, you know, I did not draft him anywhere. I was so off him. And then a Salvador Perez. Um, he started off the year 0 for 7. Uh, so I took a two-game victory lap. But since then, he has gone 9 for 17 in his last four games with two home runs, eight RBIs. And I wanted to he, use him just to stick it to you, but yeah, continue. He is the number one catcher right now. Um, yeah. You know, there's there's no doubt about it. And he's going to get full-time playing time. If he's not catching, they want him at first base. He played first base once. Um, he'll probably slot on a DH. Is this sustainable for a whole season? I don't know, but, you know, I, I'm leaning towards the no. But enjoy it while you can. And, you know, he obviously looks like he's locked in. So, um, yeah, go go get some Salvador Perez if he's still out there. Yeah, my second one is a guy who the – fantasy experts loved coming into the season and he's paying dividends that so far that's spencer steer um what a season this dude has had and obviously uh he hits the grand slam it's his only home run right but he's nine for 19 that's a 474 batting average 737 slugging 524 on base is ridiculous he has a stolen base he has five runs scored nine hits is ridiculous this guy um of all the cincinnati reds that you talked about he's really been the only one that's actually been playing up to that standard so yeah. far, but my God, is he playing well so far on the season? Do you have a little Midwest bias? Am I rubbing off on you? No, no pun intended again. Wow. That's that, from... two guys from the AL, from the yeah. NL central. Jesus Hopefully Christ. maybe I should have um, waited for your third one. Maybe your third guy is a uh, AL central or NL. Central. No, he's not. <laughs> Sorry. No. Um, but I will say this, the, the two guys, those two guys steer 
I drafted him. I made sure to get him in my in my other league, my main league, the uh, auction league, because of you know because of what you said on our podcast and you know thank you <laughs> I guess because uh, you were definitely right. Uh, my last hot. I didn't even realize I did this too. I'm on the AL Central for my hot. I, I am Shocking. trying not. Well, I had okay. <laughs> I will say I had Luis Campusano on here, um, uh-huh, but sure I took him did. off. Um, who's another one I had? Oh, well, that was in the, the not section, but anyways, my last hot is I went with a pitcher here, Shane Bieber. Um, we anything to do with him being on your fantasy team? Um, a little, maybe. Yeah. It also has to do yeah. with when he, he, him being the, one of the top five starters right now. Um, yeah, he was a guy that people were down on, you know, they expected MVP numbers for the last couple of years and he, he didn't deliver, but I think a big part of it was this off season. He brought his fastball velocity back up. And so I don't know if you've seen his last two starts or his first two starts, I should say, but in his first two starts, he's gone six innings in both of them. And he's had 11 strikeouts and nine strikeouts in those two. So 20 K's in 12 innings. He's had one walk. He's got a 44% strikeout rate so far. Like obviously that's not sustainable, but clearly this increased fastball velo is, is working for him. And um, I'm excited for Shane Bieber. If you bought him, you know, at all this season, I think you're going to get your money's worth and some. Yeah, this is a guy who another one of those guys who has been at the top of his game at points in his career has been one of the best pitchers in the league. There's no reason to think he can't be that level again. Now, I was going to go Freddie Freeman. I, I felt that was too chalk and it was kind of going to be a direct shot at you because I have him in that one league where I love him um in my main league and then obviously i didn't get him he's been f- so i was gonna go freddie freeman on one side and i was going to put uh Ramir- jose ramirez on the other side I'd be like see what's happening here see why i wanted freeman over ramirez but whatever it's early uh i'm not gonna do that instead i'm gonna go a different direction i'm gonna go nick pavetta uh 0.82 era through two starts 13 strikeouts in 11 innings pitched and a 0.82 whip he has a win on the year he's been awesome so far uh, not a chalk guy, not one of those guys you expect it to be awesome. I don't know if Nick Pavetta can keep this up. I doubt he can, uh, but he's been freaking awesome so far this season. 